Now, it's one thing to create effective ads, and it's another to keep the viewer's attention. So Jay Leon, VP of Research at Turner Sports, and Carl Marcy, co-founder, chairman, and chief science officer at Interscope Research, will share their results on snapbacking the target's attention from second screen to first by using customized ads. Please help me in welcoming Jay and Carl to the stage. Thank you, thank you very much. I have to run, I only have 10 minutes. How is everybody? Okay, I'd like to thank the ARF for having me. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Carl Marcy for joining me. And uh, my name is Jay Leon. I'm Vice President of Research for Turner Sports, who, along with CBS, actually air the tournament, okay? Uh, so fill out your bracket on bleacherreport.com or cbssports.com. All right, so thank you very much. Uh, here's why I'm here. You, you see sports all the time, and they talk about uh, the official sponsors of this event or that event, or the corporate partner of this event, uh, as we call it, for the NCAA. But what are these folks, you know, traditionally, these big, tall, handsome salespeople would go out and sell it. People like, who look like Carl, actually, uh, <laughs> would, would, would sell these uh, events and their sponsorships, but how do they quantify what they got for it? So uh, what we've been doing at Turner, along with CBS, is one of the things they get is the ability to actually customize their ads with custom uh, footage, uh, talent, marks, logos, et cetera, of the NCAA. And if we could demonstrate an increase in ad engagement as a result of that, it would be showing the added value these folks are actually paying a premium for for being corporate sponsors. So we did this study in the media lab with uh, respondents in front of live games in three different cells in uh, 2014. The first group was TV only, second group TV, and they had a second screen, either an iPad or, or a mobile phone. And then the third group uh, watched the game only on a mobile device. Now, uh, this is important, I'll, I'll go through it quickly. The TV only group and the TV plus second screen group watched a game on Thursday night that went into double overtime between the eventual winner, Connecticut, and St. Joseph's. It, uh, it was an amazingly close game. People were swinging from the chandeliers, doing cartwheels, yelling, screaming, it was fantastic. And then the second game on Friday night, we had the online only group where people were watching on their mobile devices. And that game, despite the score, was not close. It was not as an exciting game. So uh, I'm going to pass it to Carl to talk about some of the aspects of the study. So if you've been paying attention the last couple days, you probably have figured out that we live in an increasingly complex world. And so we wanted to create a study design that could capture not just one screen, but two screens. And the other theme I think you've probably been noticing over the last couple of days is that the creative matters. And so we also needed technologies and methodologies that could measure the role of emotion as people engage not only with the content, but also with the advertising throughout an entire two hour plus experience. So what we did is we employed four different methodologies. The first is using biometrics. This is in the form of a belt, measuring things like heart rate variability and skin conductivity, the gold standards in the depth of emotional processing moment to moment. We also use eye tracking, which allowed us to pinpoint branding moments on either screen within a fraction of a centimeter. And then we did behavioral coding. So these are human coders watching every single second of every participant's video so we could tell which platform they were engaged with, the primary screen or the secondary screen. And then finally, we incorporated some traditional measures of self-report to get that conscious top of mind res uh, response. And as Jay goes through the results, look for an icon in the, in the bottom of the screen to give you an indicator of where those insights came from. Thank you. Okay, so we'll start out uh, the self-reporting, the survey, as the folks left the group. Uh, you see that uh, in the top two box of how much they s said they enjoyed the game, the TV group and the TV plus app group had the highest scores, whereas online was lower. This makes sense. I told you that they saw the super exciting game, whereas the other one game was not as exciting. But if you look at the biometric results of the game, you see that the scores were higher for the online 
uh, group, uh, less so for TV plus app, less so for TV. So what's going on here? Let's take a look at the ad pods. The ad pods uh, where uh, anything over a 90 is like Super Bowl level engagement and anything over 75 is uh, considered very highly engaged. You're seeing that everybody was engaged, but uh, online was the highest, then TV, and then TV plus app. So what's going on here? Somebody is very engaged when they're looking at their device and watching, and they don't have the distractions that certainly the two-screen folks do, but even TV only, where they're distracted by other people who may be talking to them. And let's face it, nobody watches an entire two-hour and 20-minute game on a mobile device. We know that from our internal metrics on time spent. So uh, what we're really interested in is this engagement to the ad pods, and particularly the customized ads versus the standard ads. What well, we saw this year, as we did in 2013, that customized ads have a significant increase in engagement according to the Interscope research. And this is not what people are reporting. This is sometimes what they're reporting on a survey is not what they're actually feeling. That's what the biometric research is about. This is what the people are actually experiencing. Here we're going to break it out by the, the cells. You see, there's not that much different with online. But again, online is not a realistic uh, depiction of how people watch an entire game. With TV, we see six percentage points advantage for the customized ads. And for TV plus app, a 13-point advantage for customized ads. So this is the way. Many people are now engaging in sports. They're watching with a second screen device with them. And in order to get their attention and in order to uh, engage them, the customization of the spots made a difference. So we have a highly engaging content, NCAA March Madness basketball. We see that that creates a halo of emotional engagement across the board to all the advertising. And then when you look closely at those sponsored ads, as, as Jay was just describing, you get an extra boost, an extra bump on an emotional level. So then the question was, does this have an impact on behaviors in a two-screen world? What you're looking at is some of the behavioral coding uh, from four participants during a single 30-second ad as an illustration. The first participant here is coded in light blue. That means that their head is up on the primary screen the entire time. The second participant is coded in dark blue, and that means that their head is down on the second screen the entire time. What also happens, and more frequently happens, is that the head is moving up and down. And what we call snapback is moving from the second screen, the one in your hand, back up to the primary screen, which is actually what advertisers really want to see. And so the question was, did that extra emotional boost actually change the behavior in that two-screen world? Jay, what did we find? We found that there was 60% more snapback with the customized ads than they were with the standard ads. So the point being is that in that two-screen environment, we got people to look up at the television screen, at the ad, 60% more times with customized ads. So let's wrap this up. They're talking about the, what we learned. The best practices for customizing your ad is to use the visuals, have a basketball theme from the NCAA. Our talent, uh, the talent could be uh, from CBS or Turner, but it could also be coaches. Um, to have marks and logos at the end uh, is very important to uh, have that halo effect. To uh, Usually a humorous ad that's uh, associated with the tournament is a best way to go. And for the snapback effect, a lot of it is audio, to have crowd sounds like you're at a basketball game, uh, to uh, have um, uh, upbeat tempo music if that's in the background, and uh, if there's some sort of element of surprise with a loud noise, that's helpful too. So this next ad that we're going to show you is a Burger King ad that scored off the charts for both TV and TV only, has all of this incorporated. It stars one of our talent, Chris Weber. Uh, and uh, there's a loud noise in the middle of it of uh, one of the characters screaming his name very loud that had a lot of snapback effect. So let's play the video. Uh -huh. Hey, Chris Weber, seriously, dude, we're trying to watch the car. Ah! Chris Weber! Whoa. 
Is that two sandwiches for five bucks from Burger King? Two sandwiches for five dollars at Burger King. Can I get a big king? Let's make a deal. Don't just watch. Watch like a king with the NCAA Final Four two for five dollar deal. Pick any two sandwiches for just five bucks. Only at Burger King, where taste is king. So you heard his scream, you heard the whistle, you saw the logo for the NCAA at the end. Uh, it was very well executed. So I thank you very much for your time and attention, and uh, have a fantastic rest of the day. And no shark music. No shark music. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you.